Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I want to talk to you about the Edge series by George G. Gilman. So this is part of a new series of videos I'm doing uh, in the run up to August. So August we'll see um, my reading event, Garb August, take place, which is a reading event uh, dedicated to reading trashy books. Uh, and by trashy books, I mean books that are, um, you know, designed to exploit trends in the market and things like that and just make a quick buck for the publishers. Um, so I'm doing a series of videos where I talk about different kinds of, of trashy books. Um, Today I wanted to talk to you about this series, the Edge series, uh, which is a, a well-known uh, British Western series from the 70s and 80s. And I think this series is a fantastic example um, of what I mean uh, you know, when I talk about a trashy book. So let me start by, by explaining why that is before I talk a, a bit more about the series. Um, so these books, so the first one came out, when did it come out? 1970, uh, 1971. So published by a new English library um, in the in the UK, um, but also became successful in, in the States. Um, and very much made to cash in on the success of the, the, the Spaghetti Westerns. So, you know, Spaghetti Westerns at that time were really popular in cinema. You know, a new style of Western. Um, something quite different from the American Westerns that had gone before. But, you know, very popular and, and, you know, well known for their brutality, you know, for their violence uh, and for their slightly kind of nihilistic um, approach. Um, so whereas, you know, traditional Westerns, you know, clearly had good guys and bad guys, the lines were a lot more blurred in, in the Spaghetti Westerns. Um, and the Edge series definitely, you know, cashes in on, on, on that interest in, that there was in the public. Um so, so reading the reading the blurb on the back of this, which is quite brief, you'll see um, you'll see what I mean. So, um, it says uh, Edge is a new kind of Western hero. Edge is a man alone. The idealised Westerner lives clean, is respectful to ladies, courteous to his social inferiors, and gives his enemies a sporting chance. Edge is not an idealised Westerner, not in any way at all. Um, so these books, you know, were deliberately setting themselves out as being a bit different from from the normal westerns that had gone before, um, and indeed, it, in the states, they were um, advertised by the publishers uh, as being the most violent westerns in print. So they they really cashed in on that kind of violence angle. Um, it was a long running series, so there were sixty one books um, in the series in total, um, all of them written by George G. Gilman. So whereas with these, um, you know, these kind of long running series of books, you often get um, you know, one writer who starts them off and then you get ghost writers writing them after a while. Um, that wasn't the case with, with Ed. George E. Gilman wrote all of them and, and also wrote another series uh, called Adam Steele. So I've got a few of the Adam Steele books here. Um, so there were 49 books uh, in the Adam Steele series. Um, so my, my Edge collection is almost complete. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how many books I've got, but I think about 40 of, of the 60. Uh, I'm just starting my Adam Steele series. These ones were very kindly sent to me uh, by Bert and Sean from the, the channel Pastori Time. So thanks again, Bert and Sean, for these. Um, yeah, so, so Gilman wrote all of these, albeit... Gilman was not his real name. So George G. Gilman was, was a name that he adopted to, to sound like a Western writer. Um, the, the guy's real name was Terry Hartnett and he was a, he was a British writer. Um, so there, there were a, a number of different um, Western series published in the UK at the time. Uh, I think Edge was the most successful of them. Um, but the writers of those, of those Westerns became known as the Piccadilly Cowboys um, because they were, they were British. Um, so yeah, Gilman wrote um, a few, uh, well, uh, I think two or three other series as well as um, Edge and Adam Steele, um, but none of them as long running as those two series. And there are some crossover books as well um, where Edge and Adam Steele meet up. And I've got, I have got a couple of those in the garage, I think. Um, so yeah, uh, so under his real name, Hartnett, he also wrote um, some crime novels. Um, and wrote a, a bunch of other things under various other pseudonyms too. So he was somebody who just could, you know, could crank out pulpy books at a you know, fantastic rate. And, and he does it really well. They're very formulaic, um, but they're interesting and they're always entertaining. Um, so let me talk to you about... So, so these I've got here, the first... Uh, 
17 um, of the edge books. So these are the ones I've read so far. Actually, I have read book 18. I forgot to put it in the stack. So book 18, I actually have an American edition of. So all these ones um, are English editions. Uh, but book 18, I've got an American edition of. Um, so yeah, so, so there's, you know, there's, there's a ton of these books. Um, and you can see that they have... Um, you know, they, ha they all have very similar covers. They are, you know, definitely a series. Um, and, you know, these these old paperback editions that I've got, so, that, so they're not in print anymore. You can get them on Kindle, um, but they're not available in, in paper copies anymore. Um, but these, you know, they sold mi literally millions of these. And they're reasonably sought after now. Um, you know, there are people like me who, who try and collect them, but, the, you know, they were not respected um, at the time. Um, either by um, you know e either by society if you like or by the people that read them so you know most of my copies I've got are very old and battered you can see these ones have had the the corner clipped off the top there I'm not sure why um, oh okay so so I think so there's a stamp inside here uh, which says this book is exchangeable at half price from JMB book exchange so that was a big thing in, in the UK in like the 70s and 80s you get these book exchanges which were basically second-hand bookshops but when you'd read the book, you could take it back and get half, you know, get half your money back, basically, as credit to, to spend on other things. I think the reason they've clipped the corner, and I don't know if you can see there, it's got, it's got NR written there, um, and then they've scribbled out the, the stamp. I suspect that basically they're saying you can't bring, you can't bring this one back. So they had so many of these um, that, you know, they, they weren't accepting them back in. Um, so yeah, they were delivered. You know, there were millions of these, but they're actually quite difficult to get nowadays, um, which is which is a shame because they're fantastic. So let me quickly go through the ones I've got here. Then, um, oh, well, let me let me talk about Edge the character first. So so Edge, I think, is an interesting character. So partly because he's he's you know he's definitely an anti-hero in in keeping with the spaghetti westerns. Um, so you know he's basically a bit of a bastard. He will do anything to survive. Um, he's got no real regard for for anybody else, um, and he frequently does you know pretty awful things. Um, and a lot of the books are basically just him trying to survive to the end of the book. Um, what's interesting about him is he's half Mexican, so he's he's supposed to be half Swedish, half Mexican. Um, which, you know, given the way Mexican characters are often treated in Westerns, I think is, is interesting. So I read, recently read um, the, Lone Star, um, the Lone Star Ranger by Zane Grey, so an early Western, which is incredibly racist against Mexican characters. So I think it's great that, you know, by the 70s, and, and interesting that it came from the UK as well, you get a half Mexican character. Um, and Harknett's um, or Gilman's, um, you know, take on race is quite interesting in these books. So you definitely wouldn't hold them up as, you know, examples of like anti-racist writing. Um, but he, he, you know, he's clearly, he, he's clearly very aware of the way, you know, non-white characters tended to be treated in, in Westerns. And, and you do feel like he has more respect for them than some other Western writers do. So Edge, for example, as a character, um, you know, there's, in, in one of the books, there's a um, he has a conversation with like a cavalry general um, about the, the Native Americans and you know the kind of battles against them. And, and Edge, you know, points out that it, you know it's their country. You know, we're, we're the invaders, not them. So it's quite reasonable for them to, to fight against the um, you know the, the white settlers. Um, there's also a book that has. Um, some black characters, so ex-slaves who've been freed, who kind of go on a, like a murderous rampage. Um, and again, Edge, you know, completely gets, <laughs> completely gets their point of view, basically. So, you know, race is not always sensitively handled in these books. Nothing is sensitively handled in these books. But I do think, um, I do think Gilman did give it a bit more thought than, than some other Western writers do. Um, and that's one of the things that's quite interesting as well. So, so most of these books can be read as, as standalones, but in the within the first ten or twelve or so, um, you get every so often you get one that that refers to Edge's backstory. So so nowadays, you know, in the, in the kind of um, the timeline of the books, he refers to himself as Edge, but originally he was Josiah Hedges, um, and he was a um, a, a soldier in the um, the Union Army. Um, so you do get, I think there's about five or six of the books which are kind of flashbacks to or contain flashbacks to the Civil War. 
um, and you know him fighting against the the Confederacy. Um, so that you know that works quite well, and you you do get uh, an interesting um, you know kind of build up of his character, and, and you know you get to understand why he's quite as much of a bastard as he is. Um, so let me go through these ones very quickly then. So we've got uh, book one, The Loner. This was actually, so there was a one-off um, Amazon pilot um, for an Edge TV series, which is quite different from the book, uh, from the books, but um, was still quite entertaining. So it was written by um, Shane Black uh, and Fred Decker um, and directed by Shane Black. So they're both, you know, film filmmakers, film writers I, I quite enjoy. Um, and it was incredibly violent in, in keeping with the uh, in keeping with the book. So anyway, book one is The Loner. Uh, book two is $10,000 American. Uh, and some of these books do have slightly different uh, different titles in the States, I would say. Uh, book three is Apache Death. Book four uh, is uh, Killer's Breed. Book five is Blood on Silver. Uh, book six uh, is The Blue, the Grey and the Red. That's one of the ones that flashes back to the Civil War. Uh, book seven, California Killing. Book eight, Seven Out of Hell. Book nine is Bloody Summer. Book ten, Vengeance is Black. Book eleven is uh, Sioux Uprising, and I think this is yeah. So this is my favourite one um, so far, anyway. So so this is this this features so, so Edge in one of the books gets married like completely unexpectedly, but gets married. Um, in this book, his wife gets. Uh, kidnapped by some Sioux warriors and the book basically is him chasing them and, and trying to get her back and get his revenge on them um it's got the most fantastically bleak ending um I've read for for some time I don't you know I, I read quite a lot of bleak books but the end of this book is so dark um it's quite incredible it really took my breath away um book 12 is biggest bounty book 13 a town called hate uh, book 14, The Big Gold. This one features um, features tigers, so it features Edge fighting tigers, which is quite entertaining. Uh, book 15 is Blood Run. Book 16, The Final Shot. And book 17, Vengeance Valley. Um, and then as you, as you can see uh, here, again is my... Uh, my American edition of book 18, uh, which is 10 Tombstones, or in the UK it was 10 Tombstones from Texas. So yeah, it was a little taster for you um, of the Edge books. As I say, I'm, I'm a really big fan of them, even if they don't do everything perfectly. So they're, so they're definitely um, a very much um, of their time in terms of representation and things like that. And in particular, there's quite a lot of homophobia in some of the books. Um, and they also have some really bad humour in them. So so Gilman was a fan of bad puns, um, which, you know, he often uses for like place names and things like that. But also um, Edge has this habit of um, of when he kills someone, making a terrible like James Bond style pun about the way that they've died. Um, so, yeah, the humour doesn't always work well, but the, the kind of action and the violence and the bleakness um, is always really, really entertaining um, in kind of a dark way. Um, I forgot to say at the start, so my very first video on the channel um, was actually a review of the first book in the series, The Loner. Um, the, the, the style of that video is, is very different from the style of the videos I do now. It was when I was, you know, literally just had, had started the channel to win a bet with my son and never expected anything really to come of it. So I will put a link to that video uh, in the description for this one um, so you could check it out should you want to. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know if you've read uh, any of the Edge books and what you thought of them. Uh, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.